Hello, Map Game Enjoyers. It's me, Strategy Games Tackle here, and welcome back to another episode of Victoria 2 A to Z, the series where I play all the interesting nations in Victoria 2 from A to Z. Now, you all are going to have to bear with me on this episode. I purchased a new mic, and I'm still trying to work through the kinks of it. Some of you, if you watch the streams, have probably heard it by now, but this video is being recorded way in advance because I'm getting very busy in my life. Today, we're the Netherlands, a awesome, awesome nation that's kind of similar to another nation that we already played, looking at you, Belgium. But we played Belgium in HPM. Now we're playing GFM. This will be a very different and more fun experience, hopefully. All right, so the Netherlands start the game with the Restore Order Cassius Belly on Belgium. Belgium, though, is protected by the British. So basically, we need a powerful ally. I'm looking at you, Prussia, because you're basically the only one who can do this job. Luckily for me, the Germans are always up for war, so they allied me very quickly, very easily. They'll even come to war here within my colonies. So yeah, the Dutch at the start of the game, they own their Dutch territory in Europe, and then they own pieces of Indonesia. They can take more as the game goes on. And they also own Suriname. The colonial potential is nearly unlimited. The conquest potential is nearly unlimited. Great nation to play. This is going to be a lot of fun. So there's an event that basically makes me lose my cores on Belgium, and I don't want that event to fire, so we're preemptively just going to declare war on them, restore order. We lose prestige, take infamy. It doesn't quite matter, though. We don't really have any prestige anyway. Prussians will accept. That's all that matters. Let's fight. The Prussians are a very powerful ally so I'm gonna let him have Luxembourg out of this war and uh, they can give me the rest King Leopold really is out here commanding his armies himself uh, he's losing so I would say that King Leopold not the world's greatest leader maybe the L in Leopold stands for losing because they're taking huge L's at the same time we're also gonna start occupying the East Indies and that'll give us more territory I can't really look away though I, I don't care that much the Prussians and I but mostly the Prussians siege down the entirety of Belgium we can annex them now we're just gonna have to wait for the UK to fail at taking the land, ticking war score will go up, and we can white piece them. It's ironic, we didn't have any industrial plants ourselves. All of our industry, we just literally lifted off the Belgian. But I think we're great power bound. Good stuff. Uh-oh, the British are here. Uh, kill him, please. Will there be consequences if I straight up don't give Luxembourg up? I, I don't think so, so I'm gonna keep Luxembourg. Sorry, Prussia. Actually, I'm not sorry, Prussia. I have no emotion for you. Oh no, the, the British messed me up in my colonies. Uh, that was unexpected and a little annoying. That potentially jeopardizes the entire war. Time to start giving reforms to the people. We'll start by outlawing slavery. Meanwhile, the British have landed a ridiculous amount of troops. Prussia, are you gonna help me with this? Yes, no, maybe so? Doesn't even matter. The Prussians and I killed them. This is really sad what's happened to my colonies. Almost sadder than Avengers Endgame, but not quite. This war may well last all game. It'll be uh, 1900, and we'll be sitting here fighting the same battle. Shall only end in the year 2022 when expert diplomat <laughs> Joe Biden shows up and mediates an end to the war. Look, the ticking war score for owning Belgium has come in, and it's making us win this war. Please, white, white piece, yes, yes. There we go. We don't need Joe Biden to solve this conflict. We just did it. The Treaty of Amsterdam... And we will honor the terms of the treaty, sure. Oh yeah, that's what the Germans and I agreed on. We agreed that they would release Luxembourg. It's fair, it's just kind of a little bit annoying. We gotta get them back in our spear. We can also just start puppeting things in Indonesia. That's sweet. All right, that's awesome. The dawn of big Netherlands is here. Oh yeah, this is a famous historical thing. Basically, we import this tree from South America and it allows us to make stuff that makes our people immune to malaria which is really sweet. Not not malaria. Being immune to malaria is sweet. Malaria is not good. Nice. We got the tree to grow. Everything is good. You know, something about occupying a nation against their will makes your militancy go up very quickly. But luckily, they will be pacified by basic school system. Not even a good school system. Just one public school for the entire country is enough for them. I like how in the Belgian provinces, we produce basically everything. Textiles, steel, guns, everything you need to form an empire. And then we go up to the northern part of our country, the traditional Netherlands. We ask them, what do you guys wanna make in your factories? And they say alcohol. So they produce alcohol, everybody else does the work. We're gonna start doing religious missions in the East Indies, and we're gonna give equal rights to any religious group. I don't care. This is a post-EU4 game. Pretty much every event that's coded in the game for me is just concerning the Dutch East Indies. There's not a lot left for me to do according to the game in Europe. 
I'm gonna prove them wrong. I'm gonna do some crazy stuff and they can't stop me. We should definitely applaud the journalist who thought it was a good idea to write an article that says that the Russian Empire's very existence might be threatened by the Ottoman Empire. Russia, what, are you scared of them? They're weak. I figure it's time to break the mold a little. Invade Vietnam, take some territory, you know, as you do. Hmm, Prussia wants me to go to war with France. No, P Prussia, we've been really close this whole game, but that is just one step too far. Time to sign the Treaty of Hanoi with the Vietnamese, and I don't remember what this does exactly, it gave me some territory, and I think eventually it starts the event chain to annex the rest of the country. Ah, France, you lost Alsace-Lorraine. Big Germany is incoming this game, and there's nothing you can do to stop it. Not because it's impossible for a player to stop Germany from forming this situation. It's impossible for you to do it because you're not the one playing the game. And me, I can't be bothered. I'll let them form. The liberal revolution is rocking me quite hard, so we're going to pass these, this liberal constitution. It's kind of different from how it's handled in the other nations. Normally, it's not a decision. It's an event that comes up, and you can either reject or decept it. Honestly, owning the East Indies is more of a curse than a blessing in this game. I've picked up about eight infamy just annexing little tiny single states. And now to annex this nation of bone slash, I don't know how else you'd pronounce that. I just picked up four infamy for this. Not worth four infamy at all. Okay, I have a new mission and that mission is to build a army that is larger than the French. Sounds really easy. Not actually that easy. We basically would have to withdraw all of our colonial troops. Also, the Prussians abandoned me for the British, and I take offense to that. Because the British, they're lazy and they're liars. And Prussia's soon going to learn that the hard way. And then they'll come crawling back to me. We can now click the Dutch Wallonia button, which is right here. It renames the provinces to the traditional Dutch names. If you're a Dutch enjoyer, you're very happy. If you're a Belgium Brandon... Nope, you're upset right now. There are so few pops that live in this country. It's basically still the beginning of the game. And there's already 18% craftsmen and our factories barely account for 100 industrial score. We're going to have to do some conquest or we're going to drop from great power. Belgium as a nation has not existed in years and whatever legitimacy it once held is long gone. That is what I like to hear. Belgium no longer has cores. Epic dub. The real question though is, how does Flanders still have cores here? Flanders has not existed in, I don't know how long, years longer than Belgium. Let's renovate Amsterdam, shall we? The typical colonial way of robbing your colonies of everything useful to send the money back to Amsterdam and making it better. I don't know why they're messing around with calling the next Victoria game Victoria 3. It should just be called Colonial Exploitation the game and that is victoria games in a nutshell negotiate a treaty of commerce with japan something about this seems like uh exploitation but uh if they'll accept it that's fair i like it and that my friends is dutch africa it's a little bit cursed but it's good business so it's worth it the east indies are so scripted all of this stuff annexing every single one of our puppets is an event that costs infamy and it's just, it's not that much fun. It, it's like uh, you're on autopilot, basically. I'd compare having this much infamy to cutting off both your legs. Because you really can't do anything. Because you have whatever the heck that is that gives plus five infamy every single month. So basically, when you're at war, you don't lose infamy like you're supposed to. You just gain it. And that's a little bit upsetting to me. I, I'm a little bit upset right now. You might be able to tell. You might not because of the mic. Is the king of Cambodia? I'm the king of Cambodia because we just stole it from the Vietnamese. Not like we needed another puppet. We kind of have half this territory puppeted and it gives us nothing. But I'll take it. When do we lose this infamy reduction penalty? Where did it even come from? Elements of society are upset about our current colonial policies. What? I don't care if you're upset with my colonial policies. Stop taking away my infamy. Up until this point, I thought the worst debuff in a map game was the Soviet Army debuff you get at the beginning of the No Step Back Soviet playthrough. But no, the most annoying debuff you get in any map game is whatever the heck this is. I'm sorry, I I'm gamer raging, but this is, this is unfair. Unjust, a menace, you could say. How did the French build the Suez Canal, bro? Egypt has been in my spear the entire game. Mm -hmm, I hate France. Sometimes, though, fate 
happens to improve your situation considerably. The Spanish have called me into war with the French, and that means that I can invade and, you know, maybe take a state if I'm a lucky man. You got to be kidding me. Spain just peaced out. Okay, no gamer rage, no anger, only happiness. Zen, picture yourself in a boat on a river. But I'm, I'm not kidding, that was pretty bad. Hey, at least we got to annex Cambodia. That, that's a plus, yeah. Let's restrict child labor, why not? Maybe it'll ease the distress that the people are feeling when it comes to colonial holdings. This is now an America game on steroids. I'm sitting here, it's like, it's like watching paint dry. My scores go up, but it, it doesn't quite matter because uh, everybody else's score is going up. And I can't do anything. I, I, I'm just, I, I'm just gonna stop annexing things in the East Indies. Like, it's not worth it to me. It's not worth the infamy. Hey, at least the laissez-faire economics are doing the economy well. We, we make so much money off of our factories. It, it's not really funny. It's more of a, you know, profit. So Russia and I are facing off in a crisis. And uh, to get Spain over to my side, I promised them that Finland would be released. And uh, we won that. We, we won the crisis. So now. Finland is independent. This will be the Netherlands' lasting impact on the world. For two infamy, I will take all of Egypt. The rise of Dutch Egypt is here, and uh, that's pretty good. I wish I had the Suez, but no, France had to take that away from me brutally. King of African colonies, we're going to go in again on most of Nigeria. Take it for myself. We got the sweet, sweet free war goals now. Digging that. It's a pretty impressive-looking Nigerian colony. I could probably take more, and I, I will take more, but this is just probably the nicest it's going to look. We're so far over our colonial limit right now, it, it's hilarious. I think, map game enjoyers, that I just might be an idiot. Because right here, there is a decision. And if I take the decision, I lose 10 prestige, but I lose the worst debuff in Victoria 2. And I could have done this the whole entire time. I honestly cannot believe that I am this stupid. Uh, I'm really kicking myself right now. So now we actually probably will have the infamy soon to conquer stuff in Europe. I just need an ally that's, you know, not Spain. Sorry, Spain. This colonial empire in Africa, though, is just beautiful. It honestly looks like it could have happened historically because it's so flawless. Also, I'd like to give a round of applause to the laissez-faire political party for making approximately zero military goods so I can barely construct any army at all. Thank you, laissez-faire economist. I cut ties with Spain, and uh, now I'm pursuing a much stronger ally. Come on, Prussia, please don't do this to me. I find it funny that the Victoria 2 events always imply that there's actually some need for the money in this game, and that sometimes you can't spend unlimited amounts of money. I mean, why would you even offer the limited option? 150,000 is nothing in this game. Why would I ever click the other option? I will say, though, of the Victoria 2 A to Z nations I've played, the Dutch have one of the most profitable economies. Wow, I allied the Prussians, and immediately they turned into the German Empire. They will be a very, very powerful ally for me in this game. I justified war on the French, but the Germans are at war with the British and the Danish, so now I can't call them in against the French. This is mildly upsetting. What? British invading Egypt? I've never seen this one before. Sometimes Victoria 2 reminds me of Marvel movies. It's just the same storyline applied over a different background. Because guess what? All the Marvel movies are the same, and you can't convince me otherwise. We're now gonna add Walloon as an accepted culture because, uh, It'll give me more factory pops and soldier pop. And even though I helped the Germans beat the British, they will not join my war against the French. Germany, you're not being cool, man. If that's the case, Germany, I guess I'll just have to do it myself. No thanks to you. Looks like only the Italians got my back. Everybody else, Spain, Germany, traitors, all of them. Pulling off a good encirclement like this is just the most fulfilling thing in the entire world. How many troops are we going to end at this battle? Say goodbye to 250,000 Frenchmen at this battle and 180,000 Frenchmen at that battle. Easy dubs. France, if you're not willing to give up yet, I don't know what you're thinking. You know, if I said my new borders weren't a little bit gross, I would be lying. But we are one step from Paris and it is beautiful. But we did take an L. 
Germany annexed Luxembourg. I really don't think I'm going to be able to, but I really, really want to kill Germany because they are making me livid. Now you'll go to war with the French, Germany, when I'm not asking you to do it? Italians called me in against the French, and I am more than happy to help because uh, it's the French. Killed hundreds of thousands of people in Paris. We beat the French and we got the Suez. Let's go. Pan has sneakily taken a part of Indonesia. I guess that's what I get for, you know, just forgetting about it completely and uh, not playing the colonial game. Crime fits the punishment here, I don't mind. This is my economic strategy called only tax the lower class because I'm only taxing the lower class. This is actually a good strategy in this game because the upper class invests in factories and runs the economy, so you want to tax them as little as possible so you can shove the entire burden on the lower class with no consequences. The more I play, the more I regret building the channel between the UK and the Netherlands because every single time I go to war with the UK in any capacity, like here, Italy has just called me in against Naples, the UK can just straight up invade without any consequences. I'm also trying to build a navy, but uh, it, they've just been hung up like this for decades. This, I don't know if I've said it before, but I will say it again, is the one thing I want them to fix in Victoria 3. Please don't make it so this little supply holdup makes it so you can't build ships. If we need telephones for the ship, that's fine, but can we please just build the ship without telephones? Thank you very much. Is it time to take more land from the French? We. Oui. I feel as if I just won the lottery because Normandy, they built a telephone factory. They literally built the one thing I needed. And now it looks like we can finally build a navy. Thank you, France, for your contributions to the great Netherlands Empire. So if you look at the late game RGOs for Nigeria, you can see why Nigeria is the best place in the world to colonize. You got your tropical wood, which sells for a literal fortune. You've got rubber, which you can use in factories. Iron, use that in your factories. Coal, huge amounts of coal, like maybe the biggest coal RGOs in the game. Great for your industry. I don't know if there's anywhere else in the world, at least not in Africa, that can compete with the sheer amount of mineral wealth that is located in Nigeria, maybe like central Germany, but that's not really takeable in a normal game. So if you're ever wondering, what part of the world should I colonize? Nigeria, that's where it's at. Another day, another war with France because Italy called me in. This time they're getting clapped by the uh, Austro-Hungarians. You know, I feel like I should feel bad for making the borders look this bad, but I, I don't feel bad about it. I'm actually kind of proud about it. Look at that. Soon enough, France is going to be landlocked. Now the UK is looking to liberate all the French land. However, the Germans have backed me. Now the Italians have backed me. The Russians backed the UK for some reason. But it looks like this is going to be very good. Just because the Germans are on the wrong side of this crisis and I am allied with Russia, I guess I'm going to accept the offer where, where I win the crisis, of course, but... The British do not get to go to war with me. That would have been very nice if the Russians were on my side and the Germans were on the British side. I think we could have actually won that. Alas, it was not to be. I've declared war on the French to dismantle them. This will be my greatest day. Wow, look at that. Austria-Hungary is just getting pummeled by the Russians. I am doing pretty good against the French. The British are silent. Do the British ever care about any of their allies? No. I think that somebody just pieced out of this war for me, and I don't think we got to dismantle them. You're kidding. I actually just got pranked by uh, whoever it was. I was either Russia or Italy, and now I hate them both. Oh, great. A crisis has gone to what is probably a great war, and now I'm at war with Germany. This is going to go great. I'm trying to hold off against the Germans, but I'm pretty sure that we're just going to play the wait for Japan to walk all the way through Russia and invade everybody game until eventually I am liberated from this pain and suffering. How is this the first great war this game? I feel like I've been in 9,000 wars. Easy. I really wish I stood a chance against Germany's 1,200 brigades. Just for reference, that is 3.5 six million troops in the victoria 2 era and yes this is good and there is no problem in africa can we like uh peace out or something now please because uh i don't want to play anymore i don't want to play anymore japan please please end my suffering thank you let's go we killed an entire 100 brigades wow 
totally changed the tide of the war. There we go, Germany. Let's see that war exhaustion go up, homie. I'm not going to be done with you for a long time. Let's call this war with the Germans and the Russians a stalemate. I held them off for a very, very long time, even until the end of the game. The Germans lost over 1,100 brigades to me. I'm very proud of that. The Russians were also at near 1,000, killed 400 brigades there too. The Japanese helped me none. So I think this is a big win. So this is our Netherlands. The Netherlands that we formed were still great power, miraculously. You can kind of tell how many battles I've won because uh, I have legitimately 1,400 prestige. That's a lot. Anyway, thank you all for watching this video. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next video. If you want more videos now, you can check out the Victoria 2A to Z playlist. It will be in the description or in a card in the top corner of your screen. I appreciate you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh yeah, you guys like it when I show you the world. The world is incredibly boring this game. Ooh, Dutch Africa. But China did westernize. That's pretty cool. And they became number one great power. Wild.